Welcome back to another episode of College Hockey Talk. On today's podcast, we have sophomore forward from the Boston University Terrier, Sam Stevens. Thank you so much for coming on, and how's everything going, Sam? Thanks for having me, and uh, the things are good. Things are good, just uh, moving back to school here, uh, here in a week, so looking forward to that and getting on the ice with the guys. And how's quarantine been like overall for you, and what have you been doing throughout this yeah, pandemic? Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it was it was a lot different of a summer because obviously our season ended early and and all of that. So really, the emphasis was at the start was in the weight room because all the ranks were pretty closed, and I was pretty fortunate to know someone who had a gym in their garage. Um, so so I didn't miss a beat there. And then the 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 past couple months though have been pretty like back to normal, you know, uh, just work out and going on the ice about three times a week too. So so it's been good. I mean, you got to be cautious with all of this, but you know, it's been good to get back to normal. That's good to hear. And um, you've obviously said you're going back to school next week, but do you know what the season's going to look like? Because obviously Hockey East announced that they intend to play this year, but do you know like if it's going to start in January or even later than yeah, that? Yeah, so, so from, from what we've been told so far, it's uh, we're going to start in November, so a month later. So that's exciting news for us. And uh, what are your goals and expectations for yourself and for your team for next year? Um, I think we have really high expectations. You know, we got some, obviously we lost some good players, but we have some, some really good players coming in. And I think that, you know, our, our 14 freshmen that we had from last year, we have a lot of them coming back. So I think we're going to be a really important part of the team and we got some really good leaders. So I think, I think we can do really well if we just stick together and and just go in every day and, and try to get better. And for me, it's just, um, you know, improving on, on from last year, you know, maybe having a little bit bigger of a role in certain situations, but it's just doing what's asked of me at the end of the day. And what type of leadership do you hope to bring to this year's Terriers team, even as a sophomore? Yeah, um, I mean, just just me to kind of lead by example and, you know, being able to, you know, pay attention to the details, whether it's in practice or the games, I think that that's, that's really important. And you grew up in Quebec. How did you start playing hockey? Um, so I started when I was like four or five and, um, I grew up here and I lived in, in Quebec. This is actually where I am right now. Um, I, until I was like 14, that, that's when I moved, I moved to the U S and, and went to Shattuck St. Mary's and, uh, and then went to, went, went on to play juniors and then finally gets me to BU. And talk about your experience at Shattuck St. Mary's and what was, what, how did you even get the chance to play there? Um, so the year before I went to Shattuck, I actually played for Chicago Mission. And um, I just, I think it just kind of ran the we uh, at nationals or something. The Shattuck coach saw me and, you know, it was a program that, you know, I mean, everyone knows about Shattuck. So um, it was kind of a mutual interest thing and, you know, it just kind of all worked out. And it was honestly probably one of the best decisions of my life. I mean, I, I loved it there and just all the school, the hockey, the I mean, you're, you're 400 kids there, so you get really close with a lot of people in, in that little environment, so that, that, that was great. And just talk about what it was like to play in a school where, like, Sidney Crosby went to and Nathan McKinnon and Zach Parise and just all those great NHL superstars. Yeah, I mean, you, you have really high expectations, you know, go, going there, and it's just, it's, you know, you, every time you put on a jersey, you, you know that, like, some, some really good players have been there. And so, you know, they know what they're doing there. So you go in every day and you just, you just try to learn from all these people that have, that have brought up some really good players. And um, I think my, my game grew so much my two years there. You then went on to play in the USHL. Talk about the style and play in that league and how it prepared you for college hockey. Yeah, that was uh, – USHL is a great league. I mean, I'm super happy I decided to go there, obviously, the – the Sioux Falls uh, Clark Cup run was was super special and uh, glad I got to be a part of that. And uh, but, you know, it's really physical, fast paced league. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a pretty big jump from from high school hockey. And uh, I think it did. A, uh, it was great for me to, to get ready for the NCAA. And you found a lot of success with Sioux Falls in the USHL. What was the key for finding that success that year? And did you learn anything at your time with Des Moines or Chicago that helped for that season? Yeah, I think that, you know, my, my first year, I mean, wasn't, it wasn't anything like I was, I was a bit disappointed, but I think I learned so much that year because, you know, you, you know, being a first year in the USHL is hard. And I think that, you know, I learned, I learned a ton and that just, when I got there my second year, I think that I took so much of the stuff that I learned 
And then I, I thought that that grew my game so much and helped me build, you know, that mental part of the game that really helped me succeed in, in Sioux Falls. Yeah, and you obviously won the Clark Cup your final year in the USHL. Talk about winning that championship, what it meant to you, and how heavy is that trophy? Yeah, whew, the, it's pretty heavy on it. After, after, uh, uh, right after a game lifting that trophy, I'm not going to lie to you, it was pretty heavy, but th- that was probably one of the greatest moments of my hockey career. I mean, it had to be like those whole playoffs. You know, we went in and I think we were a three seed in the West, like not, not the favorites. And, you know, we, we knock out, we, I mean, first round, we played a four overtime game against Sioux City. And then, um, and then we knocked out Waterloo and then Tri City, which had lost like very minimal games during the year. And then uh, go, go and play Chicago. That was just, it was just, it was just great. And I mean, I, I, that was something I'll always remember for sure. <laughs> now I want to talk to you about your recruitment process and what made you want to go to BU? Um, so, uh, I actually visited BU when I was younger, when I was like 16 years old or something. And it was, it was one of my dream schools, actually. I I loved it there. And, uh, you know, I think that, um, you know, with how, how the season went in Sioux Falls, I think everything just lined up perfectly for, for that to happen there. And I, I felt like it was an opportunity I couldn't pass on. What was the biggest adjustment you had to make coming into BU for you? Yeah, I think, I think it's um, decision-making and, and skill. You know, if, if you're not always, if you're not always turned on and you're not always ready, then you could get beat because all the players are so good and it's so fast. And, you know, you, you got to know what you're going to do with the puck before you get it or else you're not going to be able to make a play. And what's it like to play under coach Albie O'Connell? Cause he's obviously well-respected and he seems yeah. just like a great coach. Yeah, no, he's uh he's great. You know, he's a, he's a great motivator and, uh, he really helps us every day in practice. You know, you need, you want, you need help with anything and and anything in particular with your game, you know, you can go see him, you can go talk to him and uh, you know, he's been great so far. And I I look forward to to year two with him. And talk about your first time going to again as playing your first game, the atmosphere, the, just the whole scenery, just talk about that. And what was it like for you? Yeah, that was, uh, it, it was pretty unreal. Mine was delayed a little bit because I was, I got hurt in the beginning of the year. Um, so I, I didn't play my home opener. I think it was until like mid November or something. Um, but it was, uh, it was pretty special. It was against, uh, forget, I I remember it was against Vermont. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was, uh, the atmosphere was great. And, uh, you know, we, we, we got the W so that always helps. What was the biggest improvement you think you made throughout your time at BU so far? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, just keep, I think just confidence, you know, confidence comes as you, as you get used to the level and, and just being able to, you know, believe in yourself a bit more and not play tight and just play the game I play, you know, be a two way forward. No, we obviously have to talk about that being pot game, even though your team lost, just talk about the excitement throughout the game when Zgras scored that goal when it was like 0.5 seconds left and was that the craziest game you think you have ever been a part of? Uh, yeah, it, may, it very well might have, honestly. That was uh, that game was, was right from the start. You know, the pace was so high. You could know the garden was just bumping. And, uh, you know, that goal, too, it's just this crew. That was crazy, you know. It was it was a lot of fun. I mean, it's, it didn't go our way. I mean, obviously, would have loved to win that game. But it was still, it was still, it was a lot of fun. It was a great, great experience. Now talk about your team's plays that this past season, because you were a 500 team, but you had a lot of talent and it seems like you struggled at points throughout the season, but what made you click and find a way to sneak into the playoffs? Yeah, I think that, you know, obviously you said it, we had a lot of talent and I think that, you know, we, we dug deep when we had to and win some big games. And, uh, you know, I thought, I thought we were just getting better at the end of the year and I thought we were just uh, starting to reach our peak there. So it's too bad that, uh, that everything had to be canceled because I thought we were, we were just getting ready to play our best hockey. And talk about your goaltending from last year. Well, Sam Tucker, he was a transfer. He played outstanding. Talk about his playing, how it helped you throughout your season. Yeah, he was, uh, uh, Tux was, was great. You know, he was, he was a leader um, just by example, not like he's a, he, he really just every day he went in, you know, he was early on the ice late after he put in a lot of work and that's, I mean, it showed on the ice, you know, he was, he was great for us and uh, it was an honor playing with him. Uh, you were supposed to play UMass Lowell in the hockey's playoffs before everything got shut down. How'd you find out? What was your team's reaction? Um, to reaction to, to getting canceled or we were playing Lowell? 
uh, reaction to it getting canceled? Um, so, uh, you know, we were so bummed out. It was the day before we were supposed to go down the lull for game one. I mean, I just, I just remember we were having like a team lunch at Chipotle and then, uh, and then right, I think it's right when we got there or something, we heard that, that the NBA or something got canceled and then it was just a series of events. And then we had a meeting back at our rink and it was, it was too bad. You know, it was, uh, we were really looking forward to it and I thought we were ready. And obviously talking about next year, you have, your team has a lot of talent. However, you lost a lot of key veterans in your team, guys like Curry, Harper and Crotty will not be returning this year. How do you make up from that experience and leadership, especially against a lot of teams in hockey East that have that? And do you think you favor well against that, maybe not having that experience potentially? Yeah, I think that, you know, I think that a lot of, uh, of you know, the not just the seniors, but the sophomores and juniors are going to have to step up as leaders too, you know, because it's true we lost – we lost three key veterans and, but I think, you know, we have a lot of guys returning to a lot of good players, a lot of, of great leaders. And I think that, you know, if we stick together and, and we just, you know, we're, we're committed to the process. I think that we can be a really good team. Now, speaking of teammates, I have to ask you, what was it like to play with Trevor Zegras and Patrick Curry? Cause they're probably the two best hockey East players this past year. Yeah. Um, for Z, I mean, I've, I've rarely seen someone as skilled as he is. Um, he was, he was great. Uh, just, you know, you could see why he was a first round pick for sure. Um, so he was, uh, he was great. And Curry was, he was probably the best leader I've ever played with. You know, he was, you know, he keeps everyone accountable and just by the way he plays too, you know, he's, he's willing to do anything on not just offense, but defense too, and power play PK. So it was, it was an honor to play with, with him too. And we're now going to come into the non-hockey segment of the podcast. My first question to you is, what's your favorite part about Boston that isn't BU related? Um, I'm going to have, I'm going to have to say um, probably the food delicious where I, where I live in Boston, where me and my parents live in Boston, the North end is just the food is just unreal. So I can't complain about that one. Best restaurant in the North end. I don't even think I can give you one. Yeah. Just uh, like, uh, how about this dessert though? Mike's pastry. Whew. Yeah, th- oh. I've been there before. Yeah. Cannolis are unreal. So, oh. what's well, your favorite I, class at BU? What was my favorite class? Hmm. Let's see. Took a couple hard ones. I'm gonna go with uh, most interesting. Let's go like finance. It All right. Interesting. It was hard, but interesting. All right. Now, this is kind of a hockey-related question, but who do you think will win the Stanley Cup? Because obviously Tampa just advanced and Vegas yeah. advanced last night, and the Bruins seem like they're going to find a role soon. Yeah, yeah. I was um, – I like the Flyers. Flyers Flyers look good. I think uh, that's that's who I picked before the playoffs started, so so I'll stick with that. Who is the funniest teammate at BU? Um. I mean, my, my roommate last year, John Copeland, was a pretty funny guy. So, yeah, he, I had a great time with him. Who else? I mean, uh, Alex Vlasic, kid's a clown too. Yeah. Awesome. Now, obviously, you have the best style on the team. But besides yourself, who else has the best style on the team? Good style. I'm going to go with Marcus Boguslavsky. He, he, he's, he, he knows how to dress up for sure. He's, he's got some good style. And if you could have lunch with anyone in the world, who would it be and why? Um, if I could have lunch with anyone in the world. Wow, I got to dig deep here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make it not hockey. Um, wow, might have to make it hockey. Let me think here. I mean, I would love to have lunch with Sidney Crosby, to be honest with you. It's, yeah. it's pretty lame because it's hockey and everything, but like, I'd love to know like his pregame routines and how he works and stuff. That'd be unreal. Now, my final non-hockey question for you is: What music do you listen to before a game, and which arena has the best warm-up mix? Because again, it always seems to be bumping every time I go there. Yeah, um, um, I, I I listen to rap before games. That's my go-to for sure, and. Uh, other than Aganis, who had some good warm-up mixes. Yeah, I know UMass and UConn had good ones, but yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna be super honest with you. I don't really pay attention to music that much when I'm on the ice. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. So let me see. I mean, I, I, uh, I'll, I'll go with UConn. All right. All right. And now back to some hockey questions. Now, what advice would you give someone trying to pursue a career in D1 hockey? Yeah, I think, you know, you, you, you got to find something that, that you're good at and get really good at that. And then, um, you know, you, you can't try to be a player that you're not because you know, there's a team needs a bunch of different players and whatever you're good at, try to be the best at. And I think that, you know, you'll find a niche and you'll be able to, you'll, you'll be able to find some opportunity. What was your favorite road arena you played in? Hmm. Where did we go? Where did we go this year? I mean, the, um, I mean, the, the BC game, like BC's game was really fun that night. I'm going to go with that. That game that we played when we were at, uh, at their, uh, at their arena there was, was a lot of fun. So many fans, you know, it's a pretty big rink too. So. And what's been your favorite hockey memory so far? I'm, I'm going to have to go with the Clark cup. Yeah. It's a, it's a no brainer. Oh, la- last question too. I, I completely forgot Madison square garden. Oh yeah. yeah. That was, yeah. that seemed pretty cool. Pretty hard to beat. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Was there cool. Yeah. The, the, the Clark cup for sure. I'll probably go with. Yeah. Is there any shout outs you'd like to give to any of your teammates, friends, or family members before we let you go? Yeah. Shout out to my parents. You know, they're, they're with me every step of the way. Uh, my brothers too. So I um, appreciate that. Love them. And I uh, can't thank them enough for everything they do. And uh, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Sam, for taking time of your day to come on the podcast. I wish you all the best in the future. Stay safe and go Terriers. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me and uh, yeah, take care, stay safe and uh, look forward to seeing you. See you, man. Yep.